morning. I'd like to welcome all of you to the Wistendahl Garden, which is located on the grounds of the Visitors Bureau in Athens. What we have here are over 350 individual species of plants native to Ohio, including trees, shrubs, vines, grasses, and wildflowers. This is sort of indicative of any type of a walk or hike that you would take within the state, and it gives you a chance to see up close what uh, a lot of these individual species look like. But mainly, most people want to know how they can create a native plant garden, and that's what this particular how-to presentation is about. So what I'd like to do is just sort of give you a panorama of the garden and then we'll go through some of the things that are essential to creating one and how to maintain it. As you can see, there's quite a bit of diversity in the Wiston Dog Garden. And it tells you just how uh, prolific and also uh, how beautiful these gardens can be. This garden should give you an idea, if you want to do something like this at home, of the steps that would be necessary. This garden now is five years old, and when we started, it was just a bare patch of ground with five dead trees and uh, dead sod. We planted it the first year and sort of created an infrastructure. And by that summer, many of the plants were already in bloom. And each year, as the garden has progressed, we've added species and we continue to do so. But the garden has now reached a point where we're just letting it go. The seeds disperse and year after year, you find plants in one place that they weren't the year before. And it always makes it exciting when spring comes to see exactly what's happening. The question is, how can you create a garden? And the first thing I want to tell you is that it is not a formidable task. You can do it uh, usually in a day, depending on the size of the garden. So what I'd like to do now is just move over to gardens that were created last year and I will go through step by step why you should have a native plant garden and how to go about creating one and finally how to maintain it. What we're looking at now is a native short grass prairie and this garden was created on May 11th last year. It was basically just an open expanse of grass which we what I'd like to do now is tell you why and how to create a native plant garden. There are three things that you should consider. And the first one is, is that if you do native plants, you never have to irrigate. You never ever have to use any kind of pesticide. And also, there are no chemicals whatsoever involved. The plants grow in a natural soil. They are basically disease resistant. And once established, they are there for quite a long time. Now, these are the steps that I would recommend that if you wanted to create your own native plant garden. And I would start out small, usually a four by eight space, which you can create in a square, a rectangle, any kind of geometric design. But the first thing you want to do is determine what are the growing conditions of that particular site. Is it full sun? Is it in shade, semi-shade, is it dry, is it wet, 
does it change as the season progresses? Because all of these things will determine what species of plants you should actually put into that garden. Once you've done that, you want them to make a list of the plants that you would like to use. And I call this gardening on paper, because rather than just start out and put things in the ground and wait to see what happens, you can actually determine the character of the garden by designing on paper. So once you've made your selection of species, then you're ready to actually begin the garden. And the first thing that you want to do is this. You never ever till, plow, or dig your garden. Most people don't understand that soil is a living organism and that when you disturb it, when you plow it, till it, you've, you've destroyed that structure and then the soil will actually compact and it becomes very difficult for plants to get themselves established without continual cultivation. So the first step in creating your garden is to physically remove the soil, the top soil, the sod. I use in almost all of my gardens what's called a Pulaski axe. It could be a mattock, it could be a shovel, whatever. But with this particular tool, you actually skim off, cutting down maybe an inch to an inch and a half, and physically remove all of the sod so that you're dealing with just an open expanse of soil. The garden behind me was cleared in two hours with a sod cutter and then finished up by hand. If you were to do this by hand, I say it would take you a half a day. But when you're done, you're ready to plant. Now, when you buy your plants, don't go out and look for something in full bloom or a large plant because it already has basically expended its energy for the year. And while you might have that momentary gratification of seeing a plant flower, what you want to do is you want to get a plant that's basically about this size. I would say usually a three, maybe a four inch size container. And you want to make sure that the plant is at least one year old but no more than two, because if they are, the roots are you know, root down and they're not going to spread quickly once you put them into the garden. When you have your plants then, what you want to do is to simply create a cavity where the plant's going to go. Don't disturb any of the other soil because there's no plants growing in it at the time being. So once you go down, you can use an auger, you can use the matting, shovel, whatever, but only plant the one plant in that space. All of these plants here were put in on two foot centers, which seems kind of large, but really by the second year, they begin to fill in. Now this garden is comprised probably about 70% of native shortgrass prairie grasses, but it's also interspersed with wildflowers. So as the grasses grow, the wildflowers also begin to amongst the grasses and by next year this garden will fill in you'll have a bed or a bed of grass but you'll also see numerous wildflowers growing in it when the garden is when you have your plants in the ground the next step is that you want to mulch and the only thing you want to use for mulch is either shredded leaves wood chips or if you're lucky enough can use grass clippings and you want to layer these things. Start with the grass clippings, the leaves, and top it with wood chips. And these serve two purposes. One, they keep the soil from drying out, it moderates the temperature of the soil. And secondly, it suppresses weeds actually growing up in the garden. And I should say third, as these things begin to decompose, they provide the nutrients that your plants are going to actually feed on. And that's exactly what happens in nature. Leaves fall from the trees, twigs and branches fall, they rot, they decompose, and that creates the growing conditions for native plants. Now, once the plants are established and you've mulched, then it's just a periodic walking around the garden. And if you see something growing that you know shouldn't be there, you simply go in and pull it out. It doesn't take a lot of work that. In the fall, when the garden is finally dormant, then you want to go in with your clippers and cut the plants down to probably six inches above the ground. 
and use that material as a mulch again. Just lay it down in the garden. The garden then will winter over, everything will decompose, and you want to add another layer of mulch to help the, the plants to get through the winter. So again, it's grass clippings, shredded leaves, wood chips. And you just keep doing that. This garden that we just came out of, the Wistendale Garden, was at one time the actual airport for a high university. And when we began to plant that garden, we ran into chunks of tarmac that were actually under the ground. There were no worms, there was nothing in the garden. It was basically sterile. But we started adding the mulch, and by the second year, you could actually begin to see that it was improving. The soil, instead of being rock hard, you could take a trowel and dig down into it. And lo and behold, we began to see earthworms and everything else. And then finally, one of the reasons for doing these native plant gardens is that you are creating a habitat for wildlife. You're offering them a habitat in which to live, if they were birds or whatever. Or moths and butterflies will come in and feed off the nectar of the plants that are growing. And what most people fail to understand is that there's a symbiotic relationship between specific species of butterflies and moths and the species that are growing. What you're doing by creating all of this diversity is creating a tremendous food source for all of this wildlife. You'll begin to see hummingbirds coming in. You'll see birds beginning to nest. Um, praying mantises, all sorts of things will begin to come into your garden. And since you're not using any pesticides or herbicides or any types of chemicals, those insects, that wildlife, will thrive. And it's a pleasure to walk through a garden and just see what kind of wildlife has appeared um, to feed on and live amongst the plants that you've created. In conclusion, there's some thoughts that I would like to, to, to leave with you. And the first one is, is that if you're apprehensive about doing a native garden, then I would invite you to come down and volunteer to work in the Wissendall Garden. And once this virus uh, epidemic has finally uh, subsided, then we'll begin meeting every Tuesday at 9 o'clock in the morning. We usually work for about an hour, hour and a half. We weed, take care of whatever needs to be done, but it's also time to learn from each other about what they're doing at home with their gardens. In the meantime, if you would like to contact me, my email address will be posted at the end of this presentation, and I would invite you to contact me. I will help you with uh, your garden design, plant selections, where to find the plants, any type of information that you need, I'm more than happy to, to share with you. So once again, I invite you to become a volunteer with the garden and start your journey on the path of creating it.